I'm your anchor, Joseph Wiles, and welcome to Silly Lives Halloween Special. We have a lot of interesting stories to share with you today. Hi, I'm your co-anchor, Che LaRosa. Wait, what happened to your arm, Joseph? Uh, let's go ahead to our first story. Halloween reminds me of scary movies. My favorite scary movie is Wrong Turn. Let's see what scary movies other people like. Here's my very own co-anchor, Che LaRosa, with the story. My favorite scary movie is, of course, the new movie, It. Uh, my sc favorite scary movie was the fifth Friday the 13th movie. My favorite scary movie is the 2017 remake of Stephen King's It. I'm going to have to go pretty mainstream and say that Pennywise is my favorite character. My favorite character is Jason by far. My favorite character was definitely Richie. I have a soft spot for comic reliefs. I'm gonna have to say definitely like alone in the middle of the night. Uh, usually uh, late at night, like around 11, maybe 10 o'clock. My favorite time to watch scary movies is just on gloomier days when it's like raining or cloudy, like later in the night. I usually really think that it's funny, so afterwards I'm usually laughing or laughing at the people who got scared. I feel paranoid, I guess, because you feel like anything could jump out at you uh, at any second, in any moment. I always feel super anxious and just paranoid about everything. So I don't really get scared very often, and I like to watch people react to it, and I like to laugh, because to me it's hilarious. Uh, the reason I like watching scary movies is it's usually a fun thing to do late at night when there really isn't anything else to do, and the suspense kind of keeps you entertained. So that's mainly the reason why I like watching scary movies. Scary movies are just a lot more entertaining than any other type of movies in my opinion. My mom wouldn't really let me watch scary movies, so I went behind her back and I recorded it on the TV and went to a different room in the house and watched the scary movie at like 3 o'clock in the morning. I saw my first scary movie at it? It was an old apartment that I used to stay in when I was uh, still in like pre-K kindergarten and it was The Blair Witch Project. I saw my first scary movie in the house that I used to live in when I was around 10 or 11, and it was Dead Silence. I think I did pretty great on my thing. Sure, okay. I think I did so well that we need to watch another story by me. Here's another look at my amazing talents. This time, it's a show about haunted houses. What better thing to do for Halloween than go to haunted houses with some friends? Here's the story. I look forward to like less jump scares and for it to be longer and like big guys with sharp blades because that's what really scares me. And even a couple of clowns that had to put them in there. Well, I'm looking forward to jump scares, you know, like clowns and all sorts of stuff like reach out and grab you. I feel really nervous and excited. Like, I don't get nervous in the car ride, but when I get in the line, I get really nervous in my stomach, and it's just so exciting. It gives me that adrenaline rush. Well, I feel uh, pretty nervous, uh, scared. Like, I have a bunch of butterflies in my stomach. I still have that adrenaline rush in my body, and I feel like I can do anything. And I feel like a man afterwards. I'm like, man, I just went through that. Well, after a haunted house, I feel very energetic because I'm got my adrenaline pumping, and just I just get scared. I really like to see what's in them and see if I'm manly enough to like just walk through them without getting scared. But eventually, I do get scared. Maybe hide by my mom a couple times. Well, you never know what's going to happen. You might be. A bad haunted house might be a good one, but I like going with my friends.
Everybody has their favorite Halloween memory. Whether it was when you were a little kid or as a teenager. We asked students and teachers about their favorite memories. Here is CLE Live reporter Abigail Davidson with the story. My favorite Halloween memory would have to be when my little girl uh, was just a toddler and we dressed her and my nephews up as uh, Dorothy and the Scarecrow and the Tin Man. And it was just the cutest memory I, I have. My favorite Halloween memory is we would all load up in my aunt's car, all my cousins and brothers, and we would go trick-or-treating at our local neighborhoods. Where I came from in Arnett, you could, um, on that night, you could go out and put shaving cream on houses and toilet paper things. And so we were toilet papering my grandma's house and they had done it and I'd done it too. And they rang the doorbell and I didn't know and they took off running. And I was like, what are y'all doing? And I heard the door open so I ran and slid under the truck and waited and yeah, they, uh, they didn't catch me. I'm still looking for my favorite Halloween memory. There's been a lot of scary situations that have came close, but nothing is really registered as my favorite yet. However, there are some scary folks that I see in the halls early in the morning. They're coming close, but they're not there yet. Have you ever wondered what the teachers do on Halloween? Yeah, let's hear about what Miss Parks does on Halloween. Here's Shailena Bacon with the story. Okay, um... Now that I'm old, I don't get to go trick-or-treating, and I don't have kiddos, so I don't go trick-or-treating with them, so I miss trick-or-treating. But I really enjoy decorating for Halloween and a lot of seasons, but at home I have two big tubs that I pull down from storage every year, and I put out tons of Halloween decor. So I have pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns and black cats and tons of Halloween decor, and I've always loved that. I, I think I get that from my mom, and so Halloween decorating is my favorite thing to do. Hey, are you going trick-or-treating tonight? I'm not going trick-or-treating, but I'm going to Monroe's Fall Festival at Monroe's Baseball Field. Everyone's allowed to come. It's pretty fun. Well, that sounds like a great event. I also know that the Howe Community Churches are holding a fall festival at the Howe Missionary Church Gym by the Totopoke. There's another option for trick-or-treating and fun. Jessica Saki caught up with a few students and staff to learn more about the trick-or-treating plans. Um, I plan on taking my baby sister that was just born to her first Halloween trick-or-treat. Going deer hunting, eating some potato chips, and watching some football. Trick-or-treating with Jeter. I'll be in the gym for most of the time, and then after that I'll be going probably trick-or-treating. Every child remembers the excitement of their first Halloween. With the promise of buckets of candy and sweets galore, a child is told that they can dress up as anything they want to be for Halloween. Many choose their favorite superheroes, animal, or cartoon character at a young age for their first Halloween holiday. This leads to a journey to strangers and neighbors' doorsteps where they are willing to unload stashes of free candy, sweets, and stomach aches that the child didn't earn or even hunt for. After a few years of experience, Halloween changes from a fun trip for candy to a well-planned campaign throughout the child, child's neighborhood and community. Some kids even collaborate to get intel for where the best candy givers are located. Here is the first memories of your fellow students and faculty's first Halloween. CLE Live reporter Kirsty Horton has the story. was about two years old probably when I, I went, first went trick-or-treating from house to house. My first Halloween costume, I was six. My first memory of trick-or-treating, I always wanted to be a soccer player, kind of dressed up as that. You know, I had my cleats and I had my soccer jersey and soccer shorts and shin guards and everything, but I didn't think it was scary enough. So I fixed it up with some fake blood, looked like I got beat up, and then I was a soccer player that got into a fight and everybody laughed at me, but it's not a big deal. I carried it, carried on the trick-or-treat tradition with my, all three of my kids. Um, I don't go take them to as many houses and things as, as I went to when I was a kid. Lexi's first Halloween costume, um, because she was an angel, that's what she was for Halloween, was an angel. 
several flexis were made. I like Halloween because it's the only time of the year you can scare somebody really bad and it's expected so you don't get punched in the face or something and there's a lot of candy. I like Halloween because of all the candy you get. Have you ever thought about what, would you, what you would do if, if you had to wear one costume for Halloween for the rest of your life? Hmm, how about we ask a few more people and I'll get back to you on that. Here's David Evans with a few people's choices. If I could be, if I could dress up as any costume for the rest of the years for Halloween, I would dress up as a mummy. Why? Because when I was a little kid, I watched Scooby-Doo all the time, and that was my goal in life. Was if I had to wear the same costume every Halloween for the rest of my life, what would it be? Of course, there's only one costume a true how person would pick. You'd have to be a Hal Lion the rest of your life, every Halloween. Well, because it's the greatest school in the world. I would be a Border Patrol officer. Why? Because what's funnier than a Mexican being a Border Patrol officer? I'd be Donald Trump. Why? Because he's the president, president of the United States. What better person to imitate? I'd be a hippie. Why? So I could be at peace with the world. It would probably be Indiana Jones. Why? Because um, he's a good character in a bunch of good movies, and uh, you know, Harrison Ford's awesome, and I already have the bull whip and everything for it. So, yeah. My Halloween costume for the rest of my life, every Halloween, it would probably be Ray from Star Wars. If I had to pick one, it well, I usually don't really go for a specific character. I just kind of throw something on and go with that. But if I had to pick one, I would probably be a cat because it's really easy to throw together last minute. I'd be Jason. He seems like a pretty scary dude. So there's one more story, my story. I thought it was time for an update on the main attraction. So I decided to put together a little sneak peek of the first production of the year, Wicked. Let's roll the video. Our choir this year is made up of mostly new students that we have not had in the past, and they're really stepping up to the challenge. My daughter Julianne was in choir for a couple of years and had been our choreographer on standby, and she was able to do the first part of a couple of numbers, but with her time and her schedule at college, she's going to have to bow out. So unfortunately, it's going to be a group effort now, kind of led by me and with a lot of help from the students. Before class, we kind of just sit in Miss Ford's room and we like to goof off a little bit before it's time to head over to the auditorium. We will even kind of go over our scripts. Whenever we get to the auditorium, we like to open up the curtains and just get really serious. <laughs> Dr. Ford and Miss Ford are kind of doing the choreography. And so they've been telling us what to do, showing us how to do whatever we need to do. If you're familiar with The Wizard of Oz, then you'll recognize the two main characters, Glinda the Good Witch and Elphaba, who is known as the Wicked Witch of the West. And it's kind of their story before The Wizard of Oz. So there are a lot of surprises, and you're going to see some singing and dancing, a beautiful set that's being made by in conjunction with our art department. Really excited about that. Costumes, a lot of music, and it's just going to be a little taste of the musical Wicked. Well, you had some Wicked footage in there. Anyway, I love being part of our amazing show choir. It's like my second family. That's a... That's all we have for you today, but be sure to join us this Friday for our next CLE Live show. Have a great Halloween and be safe. But wait, we have a special guest today. It's me, Callie Burgess. Hi. Hello. So, Callie, what have you been doing since you left our school? 
Well, I went to Carl Albert, even though I planned on going to UCO, and I'm planning to graduate with an associate's in pre-med, and then hopefully become a professor in anatomy and physiology. That sounds like a wonderful plan. But it do you miss high school? Um, I do sometimes just because it was easier and I didn't have to put as much effort as I did in college. Um, tip number one, make sure that you guys pay attention in high school because when they tell you you need to learn how to learn, straight up you need to learn how to learn. Yeah. Well, that sounds like some great advice. It is. Anything that comes from me is great advice, y'all. <laughs> so that's pretty much all we have. Um, have a wonderful Halloween. Have a wonderful Halloween. Bye, guys. Okay.